Um, so these notes uh, called Introduction to Sustainable Agriculture and Methods, uh, I have a little note at the bottom of the screen there, and, and that's kind of an important one. Um, I do want you to know, any of you who've had me as students before, you already know this, um, but I do post all of my notes online, and that's really helpful to you if you've been absent, of course, but even more so when it comes time for a test, or if I go over something too quickly in class, uh, you can find these under class notes on my website, okay? I won't necessarily link it at Canvas, but at my website. Remember, my website is sort of the portal where you find everything. So today, I want to talk about that stuff. I want to make sure you're clear. Please do take do a good job taking notes, but mostly listen, okay? So you all are, have enrolled in a course called Sustainable Agriculture, and I want to talk about that name first. I want to make sure you're really clear about what sustainable is and what agriculture is. And sustainability, and this is something you're probably, you have at least a sense of, sustainability is, like it says there, it's the enduring long-term maintenance of resources. It basically means we do stuff now so that there are still resources and services that nature provides that are available to people in the future. And I say nature, but it's not just nature. Sustainability also relates to economic and societal factors as well. So that's what sustainability is. In other words, you guys can work on the farm for the next nine months. And next year, students can come and the farm will still be in good enough shape that they can work on it too. The soil won't be gone. The nutrients won't be gone. Okay. Um, we are maintaining the farm into perpetuity. Uh, generally, this can be achieved in a variety of ways. There are lots of ways. We're going to be learning about that all year. But a big way is by mimicking nature taking the things that nature does well and try to sort of encourage those in our growing space. And I have a little saying that I like to use to remember this, it's biosorn. And if you've been in my apes class, you've heard me mention this before. Uh, bio, standing for biodiversity. So from sorn, standing for solar energy. And the urn from biosorn, standing for recycling nutrients. Those are three things that generally we can do to mimic nature, and encourage more sustainability at our farm site. Another way to think about this is looking at our inputs and outputs. Are we taking too much out of the, of the bank of our farm, the nutrients and so forth? And we actually keep track of that. Um, I think a number of you had the opportunity to weigh some quince the other day. All right, so uh, moving on to the other part of our class name is agriculture. And agriculture, actually, you can break it down. The derivation of the word is, Agri means land and culture means growing. So agriculture is growing food, okay? And I have a little bit to add to that and I'll show you that on the next slide. But I do wanna just point out, you guys are in a really, looking at a really important subject um, because agriculture is how we humans probably most significantly impact the planet. And furthermore, it's something that we kind of, we have to have the impact in order for us to survive. We eat, you know, three times a day, hopefully or something like that. Um, and as it says at the bottom of the screen there, food and its unequal distribution creates all kinds of problems, okay? It, we're making huge impacts, but the really interesting converse of that, the sort of flip side of that, is that food actually can be a way that we benefit the earth. So we impact it negatively in a lot of ways, but we can actually create real positivity around the way we produce food. We can create positive change. We can create environmental benefits even. So we'll be working on that all year. Um, I did mention that agriculture is about growing food, but actually the best farms um, really focus on their soil. Um, so what I like to remind people, and some of you may have even heard me mention this when we were on the farm the other day, but we grow our soil first. In order to grow good food, you got to have good soil. Um, and that's often termed regenerative agriculture. And a bad name for this class would not be regenerative agriculture. We call it sustainable agriculture and regeneration of soil is an important part of that. So those terms are, are really somewhat interchangeable and both very relevant to the course. We'll see. Uh, I have a few slides now that are gonna talk about the ABCs. And I do not need you to write down everything that I'm gonna talk about right now, but I would like you to write down what the ABCs are. When we think about agriculture, or for that matter, any sort of impact or ecosystem, I encourage you to consider the breadth of those impacts and the breadth of that ecosystem with the A, Bs, and Cs. 
The A stands for abiotic. So these are things that are non-living. These are really important resources. Um, they include things like the sun and water and land. And um, I'll talk about B and C in a minute, but uh, land in particular, that's, that's a big one. There's a picture of an apple right there. And I, just imagine that apple were the whole entire earth. I would have to peel off just the very, a little 3% portion of the peel to represent what is available on that apple as a metaphor for the earth for us to grow the food that we need to feed everyone on the planet. So that it's not very much. Um, and in fact, if we were to do the math on it, there's about 20,000 square feet per person presently available on our planet for us to live on of, of growable land. Um, and let's see, a football field is like 300 times about 50. So it's, it's somewhere on the order of the size of a, of a football field, okay? And of course, you can't use all the land that's available to you to grow food. So we actually use the number 4,000 as a sustainable amount of land that each person in the world could theoretically have to grow all the food that they need, okay? So keep that number in mind. That's, that's something worth writing down, okay? 4,000 square feet. So when we talk about abiotic stuff, land is a big part of that, water as well. When we talk about biotic things, I've already sort of referred to it, the people on the planet we're trying to eat. There are also animals that we take care of and just animals that we hope can exist anyway. But the biotic factors, the living things are really important as well. We have almost 8 billion people on our planet right now. That's a lot of people to share a lot of resources. And then uh, the last of those A, B, and Cs, the C is culture. Okay, so how we in particular as humans impact the A's and the B's, how we impact each other. Okay, that culture is important, whether it be agriculture or other types of culture. And there, here's some really important statistics. What you are doing in this class is addressing some major cultural problems that we create, like utilizing 70% of all the ground and surface water on the planet through agriculture, causing 60% of water pollution through agriculture, using 40% of our usable land for agriculture. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, all those things, except for the water pollution part. The way we do agriculture makes an impact on them, though. We also, through agriculture, cause about one quarter of all greenhouse gases. Okay, so um, agriculture is impactful. And for that reason, and uh, uh, sorry, I forgot this part too. It's also impactful in societal ways, creating inequality. Uh, there are poverty issues associated with how we distribute food and who gets it, and health issues as well. So there's a lot to say about that, and that's stuff that we'll be looking at all, all year long. So in sustainable agriculture, what do we do? What do we do about this stuff, about these ABCs? Well, I told you before as the, at the bottom of the page, like it says, we try to mimic nature. We try to do things sort of the way nature does them as best we can, just with a little human involvement. So we use what's free. We have sun that shines down. We have our knowledge that we gain and we, we learn a lot of stuff here and that, that helps us do better. Um, and we also try to minimize the inputs that we bring in. So we try to not use a lot of water. Um, we try to encourage the recycling of nutrients and that's compost. And those are just some examples. We'll talk about that stuff all year long. Um, this slide, and there's a lot of numbers and words on here, but this kind of gets back to something I was mentioning when I was talking about the ABC. So, it is through our calculations, we can estimate that it is possible and kind of necessary for each person on the planet to use no more than about 4,000 square feet of land to grow food. That, that would be like a sustainable ideal. And starting today, really, and over the course of the next week, I'm going to assign you a bed in our farm. And our farm is about 4,000 square feet on purpose. Uh, and on the farm, we have a bunch of different beds. And each bed is about 60 square feet. That's what the 60 SF refers to. So you're going to have a 60 square foot bed. And on average, a human, you know, this is an approximation, but a human needs about 2,000 pounds of food a year. So if you do the math, if you're growing 60 square feet of the 4,000 that we have, that means your goal, and this is a goal worth writing down, your goal in your bed that you're going to work on with your group is to produce 30 pounds of food. Okay. So that's a, a number to remember and write down. In addition to that 60 square foot feet, 
it's not enough to just grow food because we're not just growing food. We are also growing soil or growing soil. So in order to grow that soil, we can't just take all of the, what we grow and eat it. We also have to grow some stuff that we compost and turn back into soil. So about 20 pounds, your goal is to grow about 20 pounds of weeds and, and other plant matter that you can turn into compost. So that's about 50 pounds. You're going to try to grow 50 pounds of food over the next nine months. And if you do so, and we all do that, we would have theoretically a sustainable farm site. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to people. Uh, we'll talk more about it, of course. Um, so anyhow, this is, uh, I've kind of said all this stuff, but we're gonna focus on the environment. We're also gonna think about money and economics. We do have a market uh, that we will be participating in. I told you uh, in October, we will go to the San Rafael Farmers Market. Um, we will learn about societal factors and consider uh, the fun associated with uh, cooking our food, and the, the joy of that, uh, as well as other societal factors as well. So these are just some things we'll do. I told you we'll be doing a, a cooking related activity next week as a homework assignment. Here's a slide that kind of shows you a bunch of stuff about the course itself. Uh, there are two things in yellow there that I wanna really focus on. You gotta be present and participate. That's just super key. Uh, I'm grading you on that, like right now that you're here video live, I'll grade you when we're on the farm that you are present, that you show up. Uh, you should be using your journal. I'll be grading that as well. Our one bed project, I have a little picture of a, of a bed there. Uh, we'll also be doing management jobs, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And I expect you to participate too, doing outreach. Um, I want to remind you of something that I've briefly mentioned, that in addition to the regular assignments of the course, I ask everyone to do two hours over the course of the, of the semester two hours of outreach work. If you've taken APES before, it's similar to activity points, but do something in the community or at school or whatever that, or a learning activity that uh, extends your sustainable agriculture work. And this can include working at our market in October or a future market. So those are just some uh, ways that we kind of do academics. Um, I really do want to emphasize the fact that you're going to be working on this 60 foot one bed, which I will be assigning shortly, as well as class bed. Remember that question, how can I help? If you're ever not sure, please do ask. And uh, this is my last slide I'm going to show you. I want to just mention that later, it'll probably be a couple weeks from now, but I will be assigning groups management jobs to help run the farm in general. We'll be doing things like composting, watering, uh, learning about and working with companions, maintenance, and planting as well. Um, and I already talked a bit about outreach. And folks, that's my intro, okay? That's the end of the start. We're just beginning. 